Ibezim is the president of Singles and Married International Fellowship with headquarters in Umahia, Abia State. She is the executive counselor of Pan-African Youth Parliament. She is also the proprietress of High Breed International Academy in Umahia. Pastor Shioma Ibezim holds a PhD in guidance and counseling and a second master's in peace resolution and conflict management from Turkish University Abuja. She has authored eight books, four articles, one journal, and presently has two in the press. Pastor Shioma Ibezim was born into the royal dynasty of His Royal Majesty Eze Dr. B. A. E. Nwanwa. She is the 12th of 40 children. Pastor Dr. Shioma Ibezim is happily married to Reverend Dr. Emma Ibezim, and they are blessed with two miracle children, Samuel and Ella. Heaven's glorious embassy, please make welcome Pastor Dr. Mrs. Shioma Ibezim. clapping but can we make it better can we do it better 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 louder louder hallelujah hallelujah it takes revelation it takes a lot of conviction to invite somebody you haven't really heard physically speak before so help me celebrate our daddy and our mommy Help me celebrate them. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the honor, for the privilege to um, bring me here. And celebrate yourselves. Thank God for who you are. Thank God for you. You see, when, when you don't know how to thank God for you, you can never thank God for another. When you don't, you can't, if you can't celebrate yourself, Nobody can celebrate you. Coming and growing up in the midst of 40 known children. Because some others were still coming and we couldn't say no because they looked like us. So they were coming. But at nine years, I took a decision. Looking into the mirror every day, speaking into the mirror and declaring, declaring to the mirror, I will stand out. I used to hear you when I didn't know what it was. But I kept telling myself, I'll go to the UN. I will stand in the UN. I didn't even know what I was saying. I said, I will have a PhD. I will today. I just made a two-minute statement at the UN in Manhattan. It went viral all over the world. You are what you say. Lift up your hands and begin to worship God. Mazelebo ragadagadagada. Jeketeke tilazi katalabalaga. We give you glory. We worship you. We adore you. We exalt you. We glorify your name. You are the king of kings. You are the ancient of days. You are the lily of the valley. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the rock of Gibraltar. You are dependable. You are reliable. You are the counselor. You are the root of Jesse. You are Jesus, my advocate, my lawyer. You are my solicitor. You are the game changer. You are Jehovah El Shaddai, El Roy, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi. Otsuonya Nasiona Biala. Otubika Moberasu. Olilanya nkendiso ugu nyiri onyoso nshansha miri ne bwogwe onye gari jenelu miri you are the shame of pharaoh you are the shame of herod you are the shame of nebukadnezar mazila gadaha riabo jeketeke ragadeke dege ribroza katalaha malege de liza katalabashi we have come to worship We've come to honor. We've come to reverence you. Father, let it be you and no man. Let it be your voice and not my voice. Have your way. And may your children encounter you in a spectacular manner. In Shiloh there is healing. In Shiloh there is deliverance. In Shiloh there is an encounter. May your children never go back the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Thank you, precious Father. We'll give you all the glory. When I was praying for this meeting, the Lord showed me three things. Please sit. He showed me three things. He showed me a naked fire. I saw a burning naked fire on the altar. I'll explain that. He showed me an express road. Recently, I attracted the federal government to build a road in my community and in the next generation upon generation, my name has been written on that community forever and ever. They'll never forget. They are still maybe done now. And the Lord showed me green vegetation. These are the three things I came with. Now let me talk about the fire in a few minutes. So the fire on the altar can mean anything you desire. God wanted to attract the attention of Moses. There was a burning fire, but he never consumed anybody. So God can use it to attract you. Again, there was a time the children of Aaron called down fake fire. And the real fire from God came down and consumed. But adventure, anybody is invoking, attacking, manipulating anybody here. There is the presence of fire. Then Elijah told them, I will tell you that there is a God in heaven. And that God is greater than Baal. And God answered by fire. And when they were being led out through the Red Sea, he was a pillar of fire by night. So I don't know which fire you want, but the fire is in the house. When the land is green, there is um, fertilization. When the land is green, there's a cobalt system. Everything is working. Crops grow very well because the manure is good. And then express road. So that's a good access that God has given unto us. Then anybody here with issue in your blood, there's no laying on of hands right there where you are. As the word of God is coming forth, it enters into your body. The only thing you will see is a confirmation. When you go back again to see anybody, whether it be doctor or you watch the feelings and you're not going to see them anymore. In the name of Jesus. One day I was on my way from Chicago to Atlanta and the Lord asked me a question. He said, what is my name? I said, your name is Jehovah Jireh. He said, Abraham gave me the name when I made the lamb available. I said, oh, your name is Jehovah Elroy. He said, Hagar gave me the name when I sighted her in the desert. What is my name? I said, I don't know. He said, okay, oh, go to the book of Exodus. And I went there, chapter 3, where Moses said to him, if he asked me who sent me, who do I tell him? He said, tell him that I am that I am. He didn't stop there. He said, tell him the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sent you. Then he said, this is my name. And the name you shall call me from generation to generation. In case you've been missing to add the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know why you call him the God of Abraham and he gets up? Because he's a covenant keeper. He's not a covenant breaker. Jesus cited that woman in the New Testament. The only thing he could say is she not a daughter of Abraham. So meaning when God made a covenant with Abraham, I was in his loins because every unborn child is in the loins of the man. So I am a partaker of Abrahamic covenant. So when I stand, somebody said, why is it that whenever you pray, you pray with all authority and it happens. I said, because I know who sent me. I know who called me. I didn't call myself. So that same God will meet you. Amen. Say the amen better. Amen. Say the amen louder. Amen. I know the theme of the conference is God is able. But I decided to talk about the God of Shiloh. Because one of the greatest women that ever lived is Hannah. I celebrate her. I celebrate Mary, the mother of Jesus. And I have my reasons for that. But I will tell you a little. Hannah. Hannah happened to be the only woman 
that was childless in the Bible that didn't end up with one. Check the history. There's another one that would have had two. But she kept saying, give me a child or I die. She had the second and she died. Her name is Rachel. But the only woman in the Bible who didn't stop at one, but two, three, four, five, extra, is Anna. Somebody said, um, the Igbo family in the Bible is the family of Elkanah. And that their surname is Nna. I looked at it and it's correct. Elka, Penny, Ha. Huh? So I saw his, his correct. I celebrate that family. There is God in Shiloh. And it depends on what we know Shiloh to be. Shiloh is a place. Shiloh is a person. Shiloh is an ancient Hebrew word and appears to mean he whose it is or he who is to be sent or that which belongs to him. You know, there is a lady in the Bible that if it were today, people would begin to look at her as a witch. The first Tamar, because there's a, t- a second Tamar. This one got married. Her husband was wicked. God killed the man. There was something about the lady. The second one came and spilled the, 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 um, 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 the semen outside. God got angry and killed him. The third one fled. The father took the third one and ran. And told her, please go, let him grow. What kind of husband are you, the lady, waiting for the man to grow before you come and marry? So she went back home. But she didn't go. She was trying to find out. What is it about this family? They said I should go. The action she took told us she didn't leave. I want to believe that Hannah saw, um, Tamar saw Genesis 49 verse 10. He says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. I want to believe that lady saw it and she decided to play the harlot. She played it. She wasn't one. Everything she took away from Judah were all symbols of marriage. Everything. So in a few minutes, she wedded herself. Conducted a powerful marriage. Heaven saluted her and gave her two boys. So until we search and find out, we can be in a place without knowing why we are here. If the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. That same place where you are, somebody can walk in from outside. Come here and lay down and cry. Realizing there is God in Shiloh. And God will answer her faster than the one that has been and never knew. So Shiloh was to be sent, the Messiah. And he came. Shiloh is Christ. Shiloh was also um, a tabernacle where the family of Elkanah and Eli as the priest were attending every year. But now, Shiloh is not a place anymore. Shiloh is in you. You are the Shiloh. Shiloh lives in you. So that means, I think nothing should make it, nothing should make you not to succeed in life. Absolutely nothing. When you were nothing, couldn't even be touched with bare hands. Only microscope could see you. You ran a race of survival. Many of you were released. Per release was 19 million billion sperm cells. Per release. And a race of survival started. You, so they were running and they were dying. But you ran and ran and ran and got fertilized and pregnancy occurred. So if you ran a race of survival when you were nothing, how much more now? That you have legs and hands and can think and reason. So you should do much more. You should understand much more. 
I cannot believe I will come to a place. Hold the microphone. Even if I talk for two minutes, and miracles will not happen. It's a lie. Or the impossible. No, it's not possible. It is not just possible. I have never been to any place. I wasn't invited a second time. Come and watch and see the wonders of God. And it will happen here. Say the amen louder. The Shiloh experience. I want to just go straight to the point before I will have time to go back again and say what I want to say. When Hannah and Elkanah and his entire family were going to Shiloh, I want to believe that Hannah never knew that Shiloh happened to be a place of encounter. The definition of Jesus is an encounter. No dictionary can define him. You can only define him when you have encountered him and you give him your name. Hagar gave one. Moses gave. Elijah gave. Jabez will tell you immediately I encountered him and had a revelation. I changed my name and everything changed. The only person in the Bible that encountered Jesus and her name didn't change happened to be Mary because the name Mary itself means I'm coming out. I'm not staying under bondage anymore. Anytime you hear that name Mary, they were born in the middle of captivity. Miriam, Mary. So Jesus encountered that woman and she remained the same because she happened to be the opposite of Peter. Everything Peter asked, Mary answered. I've left all and followed. She left all and followed. He went to the tomb. He didn't see anything. She went and she saw. Peter denied him three times. Mary proclaimed him to the whole world. Every question he asked, she was there to answer. When Jesus was choosing disciples, he didn't choose a woman. But there are protocol breakers. There are those that can come from behind and put themselves in the forefront. She wasn't there. No woman was there. She told people, if you hear his coming, let us know. Let me know. And they wondered, what do you need? She said, anytime you hear his coming, let me know. And they went and told him, that man has come. Oh, he's in the house of Simon. She hurriedly went to her bedroom. Started looking for what to pick. She lifted up this one. It wasn't too heavy. She lifted another one. No, she wasn't. Then she saw the alabaster container. Took it and she kept it back again. And she took it. She said, if it doesn't cost me anything, I won't give it to him. She found her way in the house of um, Simon. And then started by crying. It didn't move God. Started by weeping, using her hair. It didn't move Jesus. She did every drama. I want to believe that in her heart. She said, this man doesn't like came prepared. Until she took the alabaster container. One of the major reasons why your problems are still there is because your alabaster container is still in your boss. It's still in your heart. It's still in your life. Until you open it. And he oozes out. Divinity won't turn his direction to you. So when she did that, I want to believe it was Judas, the social guy. He said, is that not a waste? This money should be used for the poor. Jesus turned and said, leave her. What she has done. Any time you mention my name, call her. We all know Jesus never got married. But when a man gives you his name, what has he done? He didn't marry anybody. And from that time, this lady followed him until he died. And when he resurrected, she was the first. What if an Adam did in the garden? She corrected in the garden. They lost it in the garden. She was right there in the garden. Jesus was on his way to go and show his father that he had conquered. He had done it all and he heard the sound and cry of a woman. And he looked and remembered, was she not the one that poured oil? And he came down, appeared in the garden and called her. And she said, Rabbi. He said, don't touch me. That means protocol was broken. Don't touch me. That means I was my, on my way to a journey. But I heard your voice and I wanted to come back. Don't touch me because I have haven't shown myself to my father. I heard your voice and I came. Meaning there are things you can do. Divinity will come down. There are things you can do. You can attract the hand of God in Shiloh. 
And by the time he was done, he revealed himself to every other and he went to heaven. And when he got to heaven, he was standing at the gate and they didn't want to open the gate because they didn't know who was there. The one that left was the lamp of God. The one at the gate had blood all over him. They were looking at him and they were wondering. And he started knocking. Open, let the king of glory come in. And they echoed back, who is the king of glory? And he responded, the Lord mighty in battle. I have fought the fight. I have finished the faith. And they opened the door. And immediately he came in. The Holy Ghost was in a hurry. He wanted to start his work immediately. Jesus said, calm down. Can you look through the window? He said, That's, look at them. They are going to gather in the next 120, uh, in the next few days, on the Passover day. So hold on, hold on. I know you are the action God. Just stay. They will gather there. 120 of them, then you will go. Referring back to the fire that the Lord showed me. And the Holy Ghost stayed, warming up and getting ready. When they gathered, Peter was to lead that crowd. But the person that was to lead the crowd was a runaway Peter. Every little thing he would deny. Every little thing he said, I'm not the one. He was to lead the crowd. But there is something about Peter and Simon. Simon means loose sand. But when he encountered Jesus, Jesus called him a rock. That was opposite of his name. How can a loose sand become a rock? But he was going to wear it out. For the day of fire. The day of Pentecost. Because it takes fire to solidify sand to become stone. It takes fire to mold it. And when the power of the Holy Ghost came down. The boy or the man. Who was running away stood there for three hours speaking he couldn't run again after encountering god here in shiloh your life will change Amen. the way you study the bible will change Amen. the way you serve god will change the way you relate with one another will change in the name of jesus shiloh is a place of encounter i want you to ask yourself a question was hannah mad what was she going back to Shiloh with her son? Now, Shiloh is a place of encounter. In the place of encounters, Hofina and Phinehas are always there. Allies are always there. Their, their mother, she was inconsequential. So she was there or she wasn't there. The place of encounter. There are obstacles it is not a place you look at and everybody is born again. Church is not a place where everybody is born again. In the church, there are goats and there are sheep. But because you know who you are and what you're going to Shiloh to do, you don't allow anything to distract you. These people were there. And then Peninas come to Shiloh every year. And any time Hannah gets up to dance, or Penina will look at her, she will just stay quiet. What are you dancing? You have been married, no child. I've had the first, second, third, fourth, and you want to dance? Do you know why she was going back? Because she hadn't had an encounter. If you have an encounter, nobody shuts you down. That thing kept happening and kept happening until one day. And that day is this period. That day is this season. That day is this hour because it is your time. It is your season. It is your hour. And all those who are watching us online, position yourself because even the bed you're sitting on will quake. Even the Bible you're using to write will shake because you will encounter divinity right where you are. They are all there in Shiloh. And I got up. I went straight, ate, drank, and came to the altar. It's a place of encounter, but it's a personal encounter. Not, we don't encounter this together. She came to Shiloh. She knelt down and she started praying with a broken heart. All of a sudden, drama happened. She was catapulted. She left where she was and she saw herself in a strange land. And she was wondering, what am I doing here? And she saw a table. And she saw three people on the, on the table and one looked like Eli. And she got closer. And this other one looked like Hofina and Phineas. And she was tapping the angel. Somebody should explain to me what is happening here. They said, do you know him? She said, that's my senior pastor. Do you know the two children? I said, yeah. He said, yes. That's Hofina and Phineas. said, they have all failed God. El Ella, um, Hannah said, excuse me, so I want to ask you a question. Um, what to make a woman who went to pray? 
to stop praying, to begin to make a vow. There was an encounter at that moment. And she said, please, I want to say something. If God, in one sentence, she reminded God who she is, will look down on his maid servant and have mercy on his maid servant and will grant unto his maid. Bible is not wasting time emphasizing on who Hannah was. And we give thy maid servant a male child. I understand that in every dispensation, you need a priest, you need a judge, and you need a prophet. Hold on. Is that why you made Eli a priest and gave him only two sons? Oh, you wanted one to be a priest and the other one a judge? Hold on. And the Philistines are fighting the Israelites and you need a representative. Give me that one. I need just one. Count on me. I will return him back to you. Not as one, but as a priest, as a judge, and as a prophet. If God believed Hannah's prayer, why wouldn't Hannah believe God? He respected his, her prayer. He said, say that again. He said, count on me. Give me this man child and trust me. I'm going to raise him up as three in one. He said, release it unto her. Immediately they released it unto her. She appeared back in Shiloh. And that was when a lie noticed her mouth moving. Because at that time now, she had gone to another level of prayer that Papa Eli never taught in church. And that was the whispering prayer. You are talking in your heart. Nobody's hearing your voice. They don't know what you're saying. It's not the prayer they wrote out. This is born out of Alagadaga. It is born out of your pain. Is born out of your personal experience. In this prayer, you are not sharing it with anybody. The prayer points are your own. The songs are your own. It is not the song of any songwriter. It is my own story. I'm telling my story. And that was when Eli said, and the wave of God was still in the house. That was why when Eli called her drunk, she didn't get angry. You can't be coming from where she's coming and you will get angry. Ali Silo is a place of anger counter. If you, when you see people misbehave in Shiloh, they have an encounter. Have mercy on them. Because they don't know what they are doing. Don't think you are on the same level. Oh. You are not. It's a personal race. It's a place of encounter. Sir, if you haven't gone to Chariot, don't go to Camel. It's a place of encounter. God brought out Elijah at a time like this. Everything that happened during that time, Rehoboam had divided the kingdom. This one was the southern. This one was the northern. In the southern, they had 17 leaders. These ones were against God. These ones were in favor. And the ones that were against God, one of the kings happened to be Ahab, the husband to Jezebel. And they were worshiping Baal. They were doing, sleeping around. They were doing so many things. That was the time Elijah emerged. Don't tell me you cannot emerge now. Because if there's a time to emerge, it's now. We don't need to hear your story. Talk less and pray more. And then he emerged with all boldness. And he went to pro declare to Ahab. That's my favorite scripture, sir. First Kings chapter number 17, verse 1. He said, in three years, no rain, no dew, except I say otherwise. And small, small witches are dealing with us anyhow. A man said, until I reverse, it won't happen. But according to my word, nothing else happens. From tonight, you've wasted your 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. for a long time. Change it now. That time that the Holy Ghost comes to tap you with pee, you want to pee. That wasn't why you woke up. Don't be and stagger back to bed. How can you slumber when the, the divinations and witchcraft and sorceries, that is the time they operate. And God woke you up. That is the time I tiptoed to my children's room. Mandali gadalabash. Riabazegeteke. Rabalegedegedegede. That is the time I went to my husband. I go to my husband's study. Rabaliabaji. Rigadalagadaha. That is the time I speak to myself. How can I wake up and go back and sleep again? What kind of slumber is that? 
And I wake up and saw demons chasing me. Why wouldn't they chase me? When God gave me an opportunity to call upon him in that time of the night. And I went back to sleep. Elijah declared, sir. God said, you've done a powerful message to one man. He said, now hide. There are times God hides you because he wants to protect you. People are rushing around somebody and proposing, but God is hiding you for a purpose and you're there comparing your life with Maureen. She has seven suitors, you don't have one. We, are, we can be age mate, but we're not grace mate. We're all different. I'm coming from somewhere. I'm not going your direction. You can go and run. You need to arrive early to announce me when I'm coming. So I'm not going to get angry because you are going higher. I will clap for you, but you need to get there so that when I'm coming, somebody will give me a standing ovation. Somebody will clap for me. Somebody will arise to declare that surely what God did for us by labor, he did for her by favor. God said to Elijah, hide. Elijah said to where? He said, to a place I'll show you. He took him by hand. He said, where you're going? No human connection. I don't want anybody to feed you. I will use a selfish bed to give you food. I don't want any human being. So you're not going to encounter man. So stay here. There's a brook. And I'll put water there. Myself. God himself gave this man angelic food and divine water. You can't drink that water and be thirsty again. You can't drink it and want what man can give. Elijah went to the brook and he was drinking. That was where we gather information offline and we showcase them online. I'm not talking about WhatsApp and Facebook. I'm talking about Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm not joking with you. You can be busy doing wasting your time. But when I enter my room, I spend 30 minutes. I don't know what I'm talking. I don't need to figure it out. It is a heavenly language. The owner of the language will interpret it to the right source. But all I have to do is to speak. By coming to Shiloh is not a waste of time. I learned at Shiloh. It's a place of encounter. So God told him, stay here. And I'll open your eyes. I'm going to show you a drama. From here, I will take you to this place. And I will take you to this place. By the time he downloaded the information, the water dried at the brook. Most of the times when water dries, don't pray for it to come back again. You never even prayed for it to come. Proceed. God is saying, I've closed the door. Greater doors I'm about to open. I've shut down the office. I'm taking you to another job. They didn't see your qualities. That is why they said you should go. But I'm going to take you to another place where they will open door. Salary will be bigger. Allowances will be greater. Don't pray for the brook of yesterday. There is a revelation and an elevation waiting so move on by the time God was done with him God now wanted to introduce human nature to feed him so meaning if God provided the woman of Seraphet to feed Elijah he would have also provided a human nature to feed him but he doesn't want interaction it's enough you've wasted time too much it's a time to get into the closet it's a time to incubate it's a time to encounter Shiloh this was what happened to Hannah when the wind of, of glory fell on Eli, Elijah, uh, fell on Eli, Eli said, please, let it be unto you according to your heart desire. And at that time, her countenance failed not. And she went back home. She slept with her husband. And she became pregnant. And she had a child. And then when she win the child, I saw the man. Eli wasn't there, sir. According to the Hebrew culture, if a woman goes to church and he makes a vow, and says, I will give a cow, and he, she goes home, and Oga said, I wasn't there. I don't know, understand what you did. According to that culture, it is null and void. It is cancelled. But I saw um, um, Elkanah. I saw Hannah. And I saw them with Samuel's bag. They were taking him, not to secondary school, where he was going to come back after three months, after one year. They were taking him to Shiloh, where Hofina and Phinehas were living, where Eli failed. 
where there was no woman figure. What kind of a woman was Hannah? Would you as a mother do what she did? What about the husband that followed him? I want to believe that when they dropped the boy at the gate, he started crying. Daddy, where are you taking me to? The woman said, this is your home. I asked you of the Lord and he has given you to me. I owe him my thanksgiving. If he believed me and gave me you, I will also believe him and fulfill my vow. So this is your home and you're going to stay there. And the boy said, thank you, mommy, and entered. I said, hey, come. You go this way. The mother said, no problem. The one who gave you to me will shut the mouth of lion. I didn't hand him over to anybody. I dropped him at Shiloh and in Shiloh, there is God. The level you know God is the level he works for you. No matter the prayer, anybody prays for you. The heart reach on. It's very important. The level of belief is very important. Before prophecy will become pain. Before prophecy will become wickedness of pastor. They did it because they want to get you happy. Nobody wants to get you happy. If there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. And they left him there and they went. And every year, mother will make a rope. Samuel, this is who you are. This is who you should look like. If you don't wear earrings, your children should not wear if you don't dress like that, there's nothing like America. There's nothing like it is trending. This is where it starts. Every year she will make a robe and say, this is who you are. You're a child of God. This is who you are. And all the rest of his life could not change what mother and father put in him for only four years. That's powerful. And they left. And they left him there. And God was watching Hannah. If this lady can do this, she can raise me many more. So let me bless her with extra five. So she remained the outstanding woman in the Bible who didn't end up with one. Ended up with five extra. Why? Because she had an encounter in Shiloh. You will have one. You will have one. It's a place of encounter. Now back to Elijah. By the time God was done with him, God took him to the woman of Zarephath. That's a Gentile. Elijah, a Hebrew. God said, I'm going to take you to the other world so that you have an encounter with them. I want to send you to those who do not look like me, those who are ungodly. God told Elijah, I have commanded a woman to feed you. Elijah told the woman, feed me. The woman said, how? Then Elijah took on the word of God. I said, give me that one you have. There was no need calling God. But God, what you said, she's refusing. Are you listening? He took on the nature of God. And the woman took care of him. By the time he was done, God said, now move on to Camel. You've been talking to one, one. This time around, you're going to declare to a whole nation. Don't tell God to announce you when you haven't had an encounter with him. What are you going to showcase? Mediocrity. You're showcasing what you don't know. So by the time Elijah went to um, Camel, he was watching the drama. They didn't know that was a man coming from Shiloh, a man full of encounter. When it was his turn, Elijah said, get me 12 stones. What are the 12 stones? He represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Reuben, Simeon, Meshach, Judah, Zebulon, Issachar, Kadan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Joseph, and Benjamin. He said, get me all of them. He surrounded the altar with divinity. Hey, he surrounded the altar with knowledge. With the 12 tribes of Israel that God never joked with. Why won't he come? And then he said, pour water. And then he made a caricature of them. Then he said a powerful word. That was how I got to know. That everything Elijah did was not what came out of his head. They were information he got in Shiloh. He said, God, everything you said I should put in place. I have done that. So you see, when you go to Shiloh, pay attention. When you go to Shiloh, don't be distracted. Because if you miss it in Shiloh, I wonder where you're going to get it. We don't have time, but I would have told you. I will be looking at it and see what, how far I will go so that you will hear a little of what God, how my encounter brought me where I am today. Most of the times, people push us away from God. What they will say, how they will react. Let them react the way they want to react. 
They have their minds. I have mine. Don't pray to go to Camel when you haven't had the chariot experience. Chariot is the cutting edge, place of encounter, place of hearing God, place that you encounter divinity. That is chariot. Okay. The definition of Jesus, I said it is an encounter. He asked, who do people say I am? Then he now asked you, who do they say I am? So what you say about him tells a lot about you and what you know about him. A lady came to me recently and she said, I used to be a depressed lady, but since I started following you online, my life has changed. I don't want to, I'm not thinking marriage anymore. I'm just thinking, where do I come in? That's an encounter. We're asking for peanut, bread and butter. Meanwhile, God is looking for those who will make themselves available at the altar so that he will use them. She had an encounter. And she said, fix me anywhere you want me to be. And I will do whatever God wants me to do. She came for baby. After listening to me twice, in tears, she came. I see I owe God. I see God needs me. Where do I come in? She spent so much for hospital, going for IVF and all and all. Nothing happened. By the time she realized that the church was building a fence and she started putting her resources in what they were doing and took her Bible. By the time she got to Psalms, she had a set of um, twins. What she wasn't looking for, started looking for her and found her. Shiloh is a place of encounter. Until you are ready to encounter God, pray your prayer. Not another person's prayer. It's a place you wait on God in worship and you should always appear there all the time. What does waiters do in any restaurant they serve? They are at your service. What do I get for you? That's where a waiter eats. They serve. While we were still childless and we're thinking of a way to come to the U.S., in 2003, I see whether we could do IVF or something. God said to us, what you're going to look for in America is in your city. Omaha. Move over to Omaha. He's there. You push, you go and pastor that small church. And what you're looking for will look for you. And that was it. That was it. We started pastoring the church. I became the choir leader and the choir member. I will use my car and be dropping people off. Fuel my car. I never knew I would be a pastor. Pastor who? What did I know about pastoring? Nothing. I remember one day, anytime my bishop's wife wants to travel, I'll bring my car. Fuel the car. My husband's car. And my husband would trek to church that day. Because I'm escorting her for a speaking engagement. And I will cook because I wouldn't want her to eat there. My money. And one of the days we went there, while we were going, the senior pastor of the church said, Pastor Choma, come. The way you follow this woman, I saw people, different races following you. I said, sir, God did not tell you. The only thing God will tell you now is that he will bless me with children. Happy, follow, follow me to we are one. Yeah, the kwama. It's not fair. Don't say this so that you make me happy. I don't need it. And I don't like this kind of revelations. If I knew, I wouldn't have followed her to come. I was angry. Today, all over. All over. I didn't pray for it. I didn't desire it. If you come to my office, I would. I have a PhD that I went to school to study. Known universities now are begging me to give me honorary. Why, why do I need honorary again? I already have a PhD. They said we want to add and add another one and give you another one. Today, um, um, what do you call them? They want to make me fellows in their. Let's cut four years of going to school. Just come. And take on. We want to be a part of who you are. God is amazing. It's a place you serve. One of my members took, made up her mind to serve. One of the days I was praying for her, I got to her and said, God will do it for you. And he's going to be awesome in your life. You will be pregnant, but at five months, they'll give you a doctor's report. Reject it. She said, Amen. She became pregnant. Five months into the pregnancy, they said she had polyhydrominus or something they call it. That the baby in the womb, there was too much water. And that she was going to be an imbecile. She ran to me. I said, tell them they are lying. You were not pregnant when God showed me whose report shall we believe. Doctors told my mother 
that my, uh, my father, that my mother had one month to live because they forgot scissors in her womb and closed up. And the scissors decayed and destroyed the liver, the kidney. Every organ in her body, she was a moving corpse. Every little wind could move her away. They said she had one month to live. And the doctor told my father, if she doesn't die in one month, know that the medicine and the surgery we went to Egypt to study was a waste of time. She died after 40 years, making their medicine to become a waste of time. After 40 years, she died. Don't ask me who corrected those things. If mechanics and doctors can get into your womb, then the owner of the church, divinity can get into humanity and impossibilities can become possible. Hallelujah. So is a place in Kiru's Terrace 7. Awesome came today. Awesome is in primary four in my school. I'm one of the most intelligent. After I like her giving birth, I wish you can have another one. Because anytime she gives birth, she comes to do Thanksgiving with a big cow. I'm interested in the cow. Because he helps me share it to ministers and helps me host people. So I said, what are you waiting for? Let's have another one now. So that another cow will come. Each of our children were drama. The second one, I saw scanning machine on her. And I saw she was pregnant. She wasn't pregnant. Two weeks later, she was pregnant. And after a month, heavy bleeding. He was coming in lumps until they couldn't control it. So they said, everything flushed out. Womb cavity empty. This is a theater manager at the Federal Medical Center. So I'm not talking to a layman. This is not a testimony from a layman. They said, womb cavity empty. Only little myoma. I said, what's myoma? She says, small, small fiber. I said, it sounds like mayonnaise. She laughed. And they said, absolutely nothing in the womb. Say, Lake, I'm Wagi, you're a liar. Tell the doctors that they lie. After all, I'm not a doctor, but I'm on call in their hospital. When he gets back, they call me. So what are they saying? Tell them that they are lying. She smiled, like Sarah did. Mommy, don't bother. I mean, I have a miracle here. Awesome is my daughter. We know the story. So even if this one does not happen, I still know. How did I get married? A wicked uncle said none of us will get married. First sister, not married. Second sister, third sister, fourth sister, fifth sister. You told me that that yoke will break. And whoever that said you people will not marry, we go. Two weeks after, the wicked uncle died. I didn't kill him all. I only pray, prayed the prayer. I didn't say he should die. Anybody after your life, anybody that said you will never make it in this land, Mazila Gadaha, are you not in Shiloh? Anybody that is after your children, anybody after your destiny, Mazila Gadaha, just like we never heard of Penina, we shall never hear about them because there is fire on the altar. He became blind and took her mother. For open confession, a blind man, and brought out rusted key and padlock. I said, This is where I tied your children. I'm not telling you cock and boo story. It's online, and they are on your page watching. This is where I, I tied all your five children. I loosened them. Two weeks later, he died. I told him, Kiru, watch out for marriage galore. But the last two, we get married before the first three. The last two got married. Then the first three came. So that is why she's an ardent follower. Nkiru, hey, call my name even in the dream. She will appear in your dream and fight you. And go back again to her own sleep. It takes encounter to do that. She knows what she's saying. And so when I say I do spiritual antenna every Thursday, for those who are pregnant and those who want babies, that is where doctors are confused. Is she a medical doctor? Can't you see the PhD on my name? <laughs> Give it any name. After all, when I got PhD, my daughter called me and said, hey, mommy is not a doctor. Mommy means you can now give injection. I said, yes, spiritual injection. That's the one I will give. So whenever I say, if you're looking for children, come. She will come. Then I saw, she had already told herself she had lost the pregnancy. But I know what I saw. So I will now say, if you know you're looking for children, come, she would come. I will pray for others. I'll keep her there. If you know you are pregnant, come. I will join her with the ones pregnant. The next month, she was having her bath and noticed that the lower abdomen was a little bulky. And she was walking, wondering, expecting period to come. By the next month, after the encounter, she went to do sky. 
I said, Madam, you're two months and three days or four days pregnant. She said they should do it again. I said, that's your baby there. So what happened when doctor said womb cavity empty? What happened when the scan said every negative report that is hanging on your neck, every negative report from any doctor over your children, over your life, over your blood, under this altar in Shiloh, it is rendered null and void in the name of Jesus. A medical doctor in UK told somebody it is extremely impossible for you to have a child naturally. Keep trying IVF, 50-50. I told her to give me the result and I rewrote it. Do you need this one? She said, um, I said, maybe you can keep it. But the one, I'm, I'm a doctor. I'm a spiritual doctor. So it is extremely possible for you to have a child. She said, amen. October 1st, I said, you come. She came. Childlessness ends today. I want you to do a quick one. Somebody who had God October 1st and delivered July 11th. When did she conceive? He didn't tire. That was how Nkiru's second daughter came. My son is 15. He just turned 15. And he was born 22nd June. 23rd June. I had a dream. Nkiru gave birth again to another girl. And I saw her mother behind her. She looked exactly like her mother. I called her. Who among your five girls look like your mother? She said she's the one. Bring your mother. Wise woman. She was coming. She came with her mother, her husband, and a giant goat. You see what I told you? <laughs> she came. And when she came, I looked at her. I said, I want to end giving birth to girls. You've had two. Your mother has seven. You don't need seven. Or do you need seven? She said, no, ma. I said, okay, four is okay. So you have had the two girls. The rest are two boys. She said, amen. Calculate somebody who delivered April and the person who was prayed for June when she became pregnant. I was there at the hospital. They handed the baby over to me. The next day I proceeded to America. I had another revelation as we were praying. I said, I saw a baby. She ran away. I said, come back here. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. It's already on you. And today, she that couldn't even get married is a mother of four. Two girls, two boys. Where they said you can never go to. Where they said you will never reach. What they said will never happen to you. The God of Shiloh is here this moment to break every shackles of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. It's a place where you wait. And Shiloh has an attitude. The extension of the attitude at home and the office. There's no anger in Shiloh. Nobody is strong enough to make you angry in Shiloh. Not even your deacon. Anybody. Not a bishop. Nobody. Eli didn't get she, um, um, Hannah angry. When I was waiting and the report kept coming, I decided to make myself look the way the devil didn't want me to look. So every day I will take a lot of wrapper. I will cook in the kitchen pregnant. I will enter the room pregnant. I, you know, my, the size of my tummy never exceeded what I was doing. Today, I look at myself and I have two beautiful children. You will not understand. Tomorrow I will tell you. I will enter. If the wrapper falls off, I will rebuke the demon of miscarriage. I will put it again. The next thing I heard, my husband said, if you know you're pregnant, come. He saw me coming out. He, he said, okay. I came out. He said, God told him to be praying for those who, want to, who are pregnant. He didn't say if you want to. If you're pregnant, come. He gets to a point when you have stuffed your spirit man with the word. You don't need a soothsayer to tell you that you have had an encounter. I came out. He prayed. Second month, I came out. My stomach, my cycle... These things, they hear the word of God. Do. do you know when I came out after prayer, two days later, my period came out. And then, it would now come out and it will make me add weight a little. Without exercise, my tummy was not getting inside them all. I said, see nature, you think you can deceive me? If you like, enter right inside. Oh, so that means you heard that prayer. No problem. Me, I'm ready. The next month, he called again. I came. 
Two days later, period came out. The third month, he called again, I came. Three days later, period came out. The fifth month, he called again, I came. One lady, Sister Huama, she said, Mommy, pastor's wife, oh, Mommy, be careful, can leave me. <laughs> Mommy, don't feel bad. This thing, you come out. Are you really pregnant? Or is it by faith? I said, Sister Homer, this your tummy that is big. Are you really pregnant? Or is it by faith? She said, Mommy, I'm pregnant. Pregnancy test is positive. And I've gone for scans. The scan said I'm pregnant. There's a baby girl. I said, This can't tell you the name of the baby. She said, No. Did they tell you the color? Did they tell you what the baby would be at eight months? They didn't give you details. You went to the limited scan. I did the unlimited one. That one gave me the color. He gave me his name. He gave me where he would be. She quietly walked away. Anytime the devil talks to you and you are coming from Shiloh, reply him. Reply with the word. Give him back the word. Don't let them use the word to shut you down. The earth and his fullness belongs to God. It doesn't belong to the devil. If he belongs to the devil, let him come and die. He should send his only begotten son to come and die. But if he can never do that, I stand and I'm seated far above principalities and power. So where will he see me? I kept coming. Listen, until they started delivering. They started giving birth. I got married 2nd September 2000. My journey of child, um, um, fruitfulness began 2005. For five years, sir, my unborn child paid tight for five years. In my church. If you go to my church now. And bring Titus book. From 2000 I got married. You will see his name appearing several times. If you want to sow seed. I will come. Sow for myself and sow for him. He was nowhere. I was talking to the air. The Bible says. That the words we speak are life. Hey. Habakkuk said they are life and they are spirit. He will never return to him void. Until it accomplishes. Release mantles in the air. So that they will wait for you tomorrow. Speak to the wind. Talk to the environment. They are waiting for your children. Don't let anybody shut you down. And then they started giving birth. I said God. Do not let them laugh. Faith is taking the first step. And you meet me midway. My last menstrual period. Was September, 20, um, September 16th. October I didn't see it. First of November, I became pregnant. When my son was born, he was so small. At three months, he blew up. By the time he was eight months old, he hadn't started walking. I don't know who plays the drum, but if Samuel appears here and handles it, I tell you the truth, you will back out. He started playing this drum at the age of eight months old, even before he started walking. My daughter is um, 11. She became a speaker, motivational speaker at five years. Destroyed my American phone. I didn't know. Well, she would do a video. It's, it's going to go viral. Go to her page, Sam Ella Ibezim on Facebook, and you will see the wonders of God. These are the ones we could retrieve, but the ones that spoiled on the phone were too many. And then, I, that was when I realized, he started growing big. My son has always been on the fat side, and God shamified low sperm count. How can low sperm count bring up a fat boy? So one day, I was asking God, how come that her daughter that she gave birth to this is the height. The Holy Spirit quickly re reminded me and said, those years you were calling him, he existed. They didn't see him, but you saw him. So every word you spoke was waiting for him to come. Immediately he handed, landed. They all came and took him over. That's why he's bigger than all of them. Rise on your feet. What do you think happens in Shiloh? Is a place of encounter. Please, sir, can I? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. The, the daddy on gray hair. I want to, I want to, can I come there? I can, daddy, please come. Everybody lift up your hands to heaven. God will help us tomorrow. God will help us tomorrow with time. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, the King of Kings. Thank you, the Lord of Lords. Thank you, the Ancient of Days. Are you a man of God, sir? 
Okay. Because I saw a bishop's um, cap on his head. That was what I saw. Okay. Please, sir, can I talk to him privately when I'm done? Please, sir, don't be offended. I will speak with him privately. Be Let me leave it. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we worship you. Father, we adore you. We exalt you. You are good. You are God. You are worthy to be praised, to be adored, to be exalted, to be glorified. Ma who is that one here? Your gift of revelation, what happened to it? It's gone. You don't, re don't, you don't even remember anymore. But before, anytime you close your eyes, God will show you, please come and take it back. Come and take what you lost. That gift of revelation that God gave you, that is not in existence anymore, God wants to give it back to you. If you're not that one, make your way and come out now. I don't have time to enter into ministration, but I'll do that tomorrow. Just a quick one. Come, come, come. That gift of revelation that God gave you, you are receiving it back. Mazila gadaha. Rege de gida labo shindalaga. This is the time you've been waiting for in Chilo to take back what belongs to you. Let your eyes off a lot of things. Concentrate and see divinity help you. I release your gift of revelation. It bounces back like never before before is a redemptive gift mazila gadaha ria bajeketekete he bounces back mazila gadaha ria bajeketeke that gift of revelation receive it a double measure is your redemptive gift that gift of revelation that god gave to you mazila gadaha come ali gadalabo he bounces back like never before that gift of revelation you receive it a double measure in the name of Jesus and are you watching me online every gift of revelation that gift that God gave to you that you lost you are taking it back what belongs to you why is God showing me the sign of rainbow Rainbow means he wants to remind you that he's a covenant-keeping God. Did you hear what I said? He wants to remind you that he is a covenant-keeping God. He doesn't break covenant. So never let anything around confuse you. Never let anything around convince you he is a covenant-keeping God. He will grant you a lege de gidalaba. What has happened before? Anything negative will never happen again. He is a covenant keeper. He's not a covenant breaker. Thank you, King of Glory. Lift up your hands to heaven. Mazila Gadaha. Riabo Sheketeke. Rabalege Degede. Mazila Gadaha. You will encounter divinity. Ribale Gadalabo Sheketeke. You will encounter divinity like you buried somebody in your family this year. Quick one. Who is that one? You bury somebody in your family this year. Raise your hand where you are. Every spirit of death. And I'm talking about somebody young, not somebody old. If you're that one, come. Somebody young, not actually somebody cold. That, oh, that spirit of death that is hovering around your home. You are in Shiloh where there is deliverance, where there is an encounter. It will never happen again. Every projection of death that has been released to you. Rabbi that spirit of death is terminated in your life who died your grandson how old he's a covenant keeper it will not happen again he's not a covenant breaker thank you precious father thank you come closer spirit of death out Spirit of death, get out. Can you come closer? Spirit of death, get out. Every question mark over your life. Every question that demands an answer, God will answer for you. Every question mark, that is a question, the answer will come speedily. Thank you, precious Redeemer. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. God told Noah to build an ark. He hadn't done it before. He wasn't an architect. He hasn't ever seen anything like that. He obeyed and he did it. And they went, you know the story, but when they were landing, when they were coming down, Noah looked at the ark. The animals that were already in the ark were the few that were saved already. They were the few that Noah was going to depend on so that other animals would come. But right in the ark, he was looking at some of them. The Bible says he handpicked some fat ones, came out and gave it to God. See, I don't, I don't want to read books people have written. I want to read the Bible. He handpicked the fat ones. A man that had limited animals. A man that had not much. He handpicked some. Immediately he came out. He said, I'm grateful. And he released it. And God smelt a sweet smell in several. And he said, never again. A man made God say, never again. Can your offering of thanksgiving make God to say, never again? Every question you ask, has an answer in the word. Can we give to God now as an offering getting ready for a supernatural encounter? If there's anybody you know that has never had a baby and there is a negative report, let them come tomorrow. There is God in Shiloh. The healing balm of Gilead is in Shiloh. But can an offering say God? Make him say, who gave that? Don't let people deceive you. Sit faith is a powerful key. A lot of people have abused it. Does not remove the relevance of it. Lift up your offering. I don't want you to give like you have, you've been given. I want you to offer unto the Lord. You see today and tomorrow, do not give any help. Today and tomorrow, be intentional and deliberate. And those who are online, all those who are watching us online, be intentional and deliberate. Something will happen. In your lives, something will happen. The God of Shiloh is in the house. Everybody take your offering or your phone and do not give like you give. Because I see the people who live here are very careful when it comes to giving to God. Please, don't join the system. You're coming from somewhere where you know what it means to appreciate God. That you wake up every day is a testimony. You enter your car, you go out and you come back is a testimony. Never take it for granted. Father, we thank you for the offerings that we have in our hands. Bless it. Receive it as a sweet smelling savor. And like you said to to Noah, never again will I destroy the world with flood just by offering. May our offering speak for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we drop our offerings? How do we drop them? Okay. Everybody get ready for something I want to do now in one minute. If you're sitting stand. When my husband was coming to get married to me, we went to the village. And as I was seated in the parlor, I looked outside. And I said, there's something buried in front of the door. He said, nothing. I said, I see it. He said, nothing. There, he now said, whatever you are, I command you to be exhumed. There was no phone. That was around 2002 or what? No phone that time. It just came, a little rain, very little, came. And the compound tore into two, broke into, sunk inside. And they called us. We came. And brought out the oil paint container. There was nothing that wasn't there. Human hair, needle, um, um, key, padlock. There was nothing that wasn't there. We burnt it. And we destroyed it. And my husband, that didn't even have money to change the two cars he had. Money came and he bought a jeep. I was a speaker. In fact, I am a yearly speaker in that conference. Apostolic Global Women's Conference. And the Lord told them that the walls of Jericho would fall down. They thought it was spiritual. They didn't know it was going to be physical. The altar couldn't carry me. I stood on the altar. I had a crack. And I had a crack. And a crack. And it came down. Iron. Heavy iron. 
collapsed. I thought those 27 women who came to, they were coming to hold me. But everybody was shouting, pass me not. They were not up to 27. But the next year, almost 27 miracle babies attended that meeting the next year. Every yoke of barrenness was broken. We're going to shout hallelujah seven times. I need the drummer, the keyboardist, everybody to be. Your own is to shout. The number one will trace your history from where your father was born. Paradventure, he followed you there. Number two, we follow you, trace it from your mother. Paradventure, he followed you there. See, Abraham was childless. Isaac was childless. Rebecca was childless. Negative pattern will never be part of you. Yeah. Number three will be where you, they married your mother. Where you are born. Number four, where you're married or where you're going to get married. Number five, where you're working or where you're doing business or where you're living. Number six, takes the hallelujah to heaven. And the number seven is bringing showers of blessing. Are you ready to shout? It is a heavenly language. Those online, are you ready to shout? Are you ready to shout? The God of Shiloh is in the house. Are you ready to shout? This shout will bring about mercy. Are you ready to shout? Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Mazila gada he reke de ke denebo number six ria ba jeke teke raga da gada 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 now check you're gonna check your body every lump will get out every pain in your throat will dry up every migraine is gonna get up whatever pain that is on your knee the God of Shiloh is in the house as we shout the seventh one you will see the glory of the Lord over your life everything that they say you couldn't do whatever you were not doing before you will see the power of God are you ready to shout number seven number seven